Hi everyone, welcome back to the Crickbat Info. This is Mark here, and today we are doing a Grey Nichols Ultimate. Let's have a look straight after this. So firstly, thank you very much to Chad. He's based in England, well known on custombats.co.uk. He's actually sent this through because he likes the channel. And I was actually inspired, I've got to be honest, by Chad in my earlier days. He used to put these really nice quality photos up of his bats. He had this polished table, obviously in the dining room or something, and it looked really, really special. So this is the ultimate, and you can see here we've got a retail price of $769. Once again, this has come through the Cricket Hub in Tasmania. John Delaney has supplied this bat. All three bats, the Cobra, the Thylacine, and this bat have come through the one lot. So we've got here the ultimate. Now, generally an ultimate is a player's willow bat, but it's sort of a downgraded silver. So you tend to get a lot bigger shapes with them, definitely for people who are hitters. So we've got here a bit of heartwood on the right-hander's inside edge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten grains. Really nice. Uh, we've got ultimate in laser etching, bespoke, and we've got here the tag saying it's made in Australia. Got here the latex grip, whatever they call that, with the zinc oxide tape uh, strapping type underneath. You can see that this is actually lifted up. You can see a little bit of binding there because what they actually do is they bring the zinc oxide tape down to about here and then they actually string bind over the top of it just to keep it nice and tight on the shoulder tabs. Once again, just like the Cobra, black and white. So very traditional they've gone for. Black and white on red. This one's got a little bit of texturing here. We'll bring that up to the camera so you can see that a little bit better. You can see that texturing in there. There is some embossing there over grey nickels. It's got the original stickers on it. And that's the shape. It's just so generous. This has got so much wood in it. So you've got something starting here, which I'd say is the sweetest position in a mid-low position, but it's extending all the way up. It very much reminds me of those player profiles and the custom legend we did recently from David over in Tasmania. Um, go and have a look at that if you haven't seen that. That's a magnificent bat. We've got the spine heading down towards the toe, petering out just before it. And uh, that, yeah, real mid sort of middle there. As far as the profile goes, once again for this year, we're seeing concaving rather than that real full sort of shape. So we'll put the gauge over it, give you a clear look at that. And once again, the uh, gauge is not going all the way over it. Um, pretty much to do with the super flat face on this. Just have a look how flat. So this is the only bat of the three that uh, Chad's purchased that is super flat. So we've got here nice grains heading through the toe. You can see that sort of definition. So it's really good quality willow. Concaving, have a look at it. I do like to see, it means they're trying to balance the shape whilst they bring that wood down towards the toe. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm obviously using my rub pack now and that's definitely got this sort of thing going on. Very traditional, I do like it. So we've got a couple of mil of concaving there. And uh, nice big high spine, big edges. Uh, it's got a lot going for it. And it's a real departure from those really full bats, you know, with that, you know, the whole point of the design was trying to fill this, which shouldn't be what it's about. It should be purely about getting the best performance and pick up from the bat to give you, the user, the best experience. Now let's quickly bring in my own Ultimate, which is a few seasons old. We'll give it a comparison. So this is my one. I, that's obviously not the original case. I bought that from the UK. I really like that. So yeah, it was much nicer quality than um, what they're doing. Let's have a comparison of this shape uh, with that one. Have they actually done a lot different? So I can see there that my shape has a lot less wood in the toe and a lot less wood in the shoulders and yeah, much less wood through the whole shape, I've got to be honest with you. Uh, probably more in that sort of mid-low position there, there's a lot more going for it. Um, and then you've seen this before, but I'll do it again because you like it. And right off that blemish right there, it goes like a scalded cat. So it's a nice bat. 
So yeah, there's, there's something still in that sort of shape, but there's definitely uh, a lot more wood carrying up through here to the shoulders, and I believe a lot more wood through the toe. Both have flat faces, which is good. Yeah, mine's old. I know it. Grey nickel's textured, Southern Cross. We've got that detailing here. You also saw that on the thylacine. Designed and handmade in Australia. Once again, you've got those terrible stamped on things and this one hasn't gone to plan. You can see there. Um, and I do like the sticker at the edge of it. Oh man, the 2020, 21 season, they came out with just that. And it just looked like, you know, you, you walked out to the ocean without putting your budgie smugglers on. There was, it was just a bit naked there. So yeah, it's good to see something there down at the toe. And um, yeah, I do like it. It's actually got a hell of a lot more wood down in this area here. So firstly, we'll do the measurements. So visually, it's winning uh, against my old bat. Oh, yours, Chad. Okay, so measure the shoulders. 14.1. Up here at the blade. 40.2. Down here at the toe. 20, over 20. That spine is carrying on just before the edge of the toe. So we've got 28 mil there. We'll measure the width of the bat. And it's a little bit narrower. It's 107.3. Um, so that they've shaved probably half a mil, nothing. And we'll do the spine. So, okay. So it's actually smaller spine than the Cobra. We're looking at 66.2 and uh, but because of that flat face and that over 40 mil um, it's not going to go through there so because of the flat face no camber on the face you're missing all those millimeters there so if it had that five mil camber you'd probably be looking at a 72 mil spine or 73 so it does look visually big um, I like it I like it so far it's ticking all the boxes now let's look at the finishing. I have been critical of this on the Cobra. And yeah, I can see some sort of marks here as well. That's not too bad. We can move on from that. Let's actually feel what it is like in the hand. So this actually feels really light. Pickup is really extraordinary. I think I'm holding 2.8 to 2.8 dead. That's what I think I've got in my hands. Remembering we're losing about an ounce and a half because of these changes here with the latex and the, the zinc oxide strapping tape binding, which they do. What does it actually weigh? Goodness sakes, 210. All right, it feels nothing like that. The pickup is superb. It's what I would call a light pickup. And um, yeah, I, I definitely could use this. So, Definitely is a wonderful pickup for its actual weight and it sort of feeds into why these bats are called the ultimate. They are pretty much the pinnacle of um, Grey Nichols Australia's bat making without having all the uh, glitz and glamour. So let's see what it actually taps up like before we call it. So we'll start here. Actually, before I say that, just as I hold that up, I definitely can in some light see sanding marks going off here. Uh, towards the toe. So that, that's something that probably just the finishing could be a little bit better down at Grey Nichols. So I'm just going to say that right now. Um, it's not something that I sort of have seen in the last few seasons. But hey, it's been tough for everybody. Let's start the tap up at the toe. And with that spine there, there's a little bit of action there. Yeah, it's really nice there in a the middle low. It's definitely a firmer press. It's going in a mid position. It's petering out now in a mid high. And there's nothing there in that high position. So it's pretty much in this area of the bat. It's a lot lower, I believe, than my own bat. So all in all, 700 and, what was it? 769 dollars. You know, like five years has carried on and you're probably only looking at about a $50 difference. You know, cricket bats aren't 
really increasing in price that dramatically. At this end of the spectrum, at the higher end, we're looking for just grains and you know what I have termed in the past that peacock look, look at me, look at me. Um, yeah, you're definitely heading into that 1500 sort of territory and, and above, which I don't really recommend. This has definitely got all the features uh, without the looks, but you know, I can tell you that um, the bowler doesn't really care what your bat looks like. If you can't do the job and the bat doesn't perform, but it looks great, it doesn't mean anything to the team. So yeah, if you're going to spend this sort of money, generally with the Ultimates, you're going to get some good performance. So I do actually recommend looking at this option, particularly if you're middle order, this is definitely the sort of bat you want to look at. It's definitely not an opener's bat. I'd probably say go for the silver in that respect because they're definitely an, another a class above as far as the pickup goes. Thank you very much everybody for sticking with me to the end of the uh, video. If you like what I do, do that sort of thing there. I'm not going to keep going on about it. Thank you very much to Chad. Thank you very much for watching everybody and we'll see you on the next video.